So let's say we have finished our low poly model. Here's the, the low poly model of the cockpit. You can see that all detail has been removed. And this runs much, much faster. This will be ready for 3D real-time rendering. So what we need to do now is get this model into 3D Studio Max to do some further modifications. In order to streamline the workflow, I've built a script which is called Inventor to Substance Painter. And this will help you a lot when you are modifying the model in 3D Studio Max. So first you have to set up the high resolution project path. So I'll click on the button here and scroll to the folder which contains the Inventor high resolution project. So in this case, it's called just Inventor. Select OK and it will remember the path. Each time you uh, shut down the, the script or the, the dialogue and start it up again, it will remember the path. Next, select the directory for the low resolution model. And that's just next to it and with the same name except underscore low right there. Select OK. And then we have to select which file we are working on. Click the button and you can select the high resolution file you'll be working on. It will automatically select the low resolution file because it knows the name. It's just the same name, but with an underscore low attached to it. So today we will be working on the engine starter panel. So that's called panel pedestal engine like this. Okay. There are a few settings here for the visibility. You can toggle the high res model and the low res model on and off and the align model we talk about it later uh, for the appearance you can set to shaded wireframe of both so first let's import the low res model just click on the button it will automatically import it for you and there we go so there's a bug in 3d studio max which unfortunately it sometimes imports models which have mirrored features and it will flip these some of the surfaces and you can't see that in inventor uh, excuse me you can't see that in 3d studio max in the default viewport but i'll show you how to fix it so the model we imported now is just to check if any of these surfaces are flipped in order to do that it first it's imported as a body object because if you import it as a mesh object, mesh object straight away, it will not have this problem. But the disadvantage is if you import it as a mesh object, then you cannot change the resolution of the mesh uh, in the viewport. So first we in import it as a body object, check if any faces are flipped, and then mark those and then import again to fix it. And let me show you how this works. So we've imported this lower model, then we're going to convert it to an editable, editable mesh select all and toggle show flipped faces right there basically this just turns on the view x view face orientation mode on and off this face orientation mode only works if the object is selected you can see here, here at the bottom that the mode is on but you won't see anything unless you select an object like this and there you can see already that there's a problem with this uh, switch here so shortcut here just select all there you go. so what we do now is just mark all the objects which are problematic so this one has a problem and just click on mark select objects it changes the material to red and there's two other objects here the this base you can see on the bottom here that there's a bit of a problem so select that one. You can select multiple objects at the same time and mark those. So in this case, that's pretty much it. You might see other faces which are flipped, like if you view this from the bottom. But this is correct because I have deleted the bottom face and then you will it will show up as green because you are basically looking at the back of the faces on the other side. So this is correct.
right? So once we've marked everything, and also you can clear marked objects if you want to start again, then you can import the model again with this button here, import, import final low res model. Click on there. It will import the model again, also as a body object, and it will detect which objects were marked before and will mark them again. So now we can replace the parts which have the problem of the flipped faces. So you can see in the, the modifier stack that it's, it's still a body object. And the only way to fix these flipped faces, and by the way, we can uh, switch off the um, flipped faces mode uh, or the XView mode. So this toggle show flipped faces and it will switch it off because it doesn't work in, in body object mode, which is the reason why we imported it as an editable mess first because otherwise you can't see the flipped faces. So you know, to fix it, just select one object multiple objects are not supported for this and then click on replace selected object this will give you a dialog box and you just have to set the correct mesh resolution you want to have so the disadvantage is you just have to guess something and then import it and see if it's correct and yeah, it looks about right so now this is a mesh object you can see that right there and you can see that it automatically adds a pro optimizer modifier to the stack. That's just because otherwise it will not show you the wireframe. That's a bug in 3D Studio Max, and it's, this is just a workaround for that. So let's import the other remaining objects. That one, replace selected. And for a mesh resolution, I've tried this before, so I know it minus three works well. But you might have to try a few different uh, values. If it is not what you like, then select it, import again with a different value. So this one we have to replace also with a resolution of minus three. And there we go. So now we have imported all the, or re-imported all the problematic objects. So next we can set the resolution of all the other objects, which are body objects. And now you can see why this is very handy, because if we just start at the top of the tree right there and just take this screw, for example. So with this slider, you can dynamically adjust the mesh resolution, you see, very handy. And it's in all the objects which are similar or exactly the same, they are imported as a reference. So you only have to adjust it once. You see all these screws, they're the same and they're adjusted now also. Okay, so let's continue. This screw there is the same, that one. Just go down the Explorer object list so you don't miss anything. Okay, so this one is a new one. Set the resolution, Let's change the slider so it looks good. How about there? Next, that one we've done already. Okay, so this is the base. And it looks pretty good already. Next one, button. Uh, this one we already imported before, so there's no need to change that. In fact, we can't change it because it's not a body object. It's an editable mesh. So there, we, we cannot change the resolution, unfortunately. Okay, next one, this one. Okay, so let's try something like... Just slowly move the slider until it's something uh, which looks good. Mm. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, maybe something like this. And you see the other one is automatically adjusted also because they're the same object. Okay, next one, this, this one we already done because we had to re-import that. And this is the same we did before, that one we done before, this one. Okay, so anytime there is an object which is a square or it doesn't have any rounded features, there's no need to adjust the mesh resolution because it will not do anything anyway. All the flat surfaces, they're 
they, they've been given exactly the amount of polygons they, they need. So there's nothing to adjust. So it will save a bit of time also. So that button is the same as the one around it. Nothing to change there because it's exactly square. And these are the same. All right, so done with it. Next, press the button convert all to editable, editable mesh. Now, this cannot be undone. So make sure everything is the way you like it and then click that. Oh, by the way, it's a good uh, habit to just save the scene once in a while, of course, but you cannot save the scene with uh, some name you come up with yourself because later it uses these names to stitch all the objects together again into the final assembly. So just press the button save low res scene and you cannot see anything change, but it will automatically save the scene and puts this in the scene files right there. So where were we? Convert all to edit editable mesh, we've done that. I think, let me check, no we didn't. Okay, so click that button and now it's all done. Yeah, there you go. Everything is edit editable mesh now. Good. You can check that always in the uh, modifier stack right there. Okay. So next, press the button zero low res transform. What this does, it just sets the transform of all objects to zero. So if there's any rotation or position change in the transform, it will set it to zero without modifying the relative position to uh, each object. This is very important because later on when we are going to change or fuse some objects together using attach or collapse, but this is done automatically in the script. But um, if we don't fuse the, if we don't zero the transform, it will mess up all the normals of the object objects because with cat objects, all the normals, they are explicit normals. So they are custom they are not calculated and if we don't zero the transform these normals will be all over the place also substance painter does not support objects which have a transform in them so if you import this into substance painter without zeroing the transform the objects will be all over the place so this button does it just for you okay next few selected objects so in order to select to save draw calls and also to make handling the object easier in Substance Painter, you can fuse all objects which are static, which don't move. Now, this button here is not static, it will move, so this cannot be fused, and, and these buttons here, they, they are dynamic, they can move, so you can't fuse those, but, all, but the rest can be fused. So the thing to keep in mind is you don't want to fuse objects which are very close together. For example, this base panel here and this screw here, if you fuse those, because the gap between them is so small, then later on, if you want to bake textures, textures from it, then it needs to generate a cage and it needs to have a certain distance. And if there's other geometry sticking out, it needs to be at least bigger than that geometry sticking out. But then it can be bigger than the gap in between and it, this will cause baking error. So the best thing is to just fuse objects which are a bit further apart. For example, this one right there, that one, that one just hold control to select them all. And that one, what else? Okay, this one right there. Okay. Now we could select these bases also, but I'm not going to do that today. Okay, you know, fuse objects. So now they're all one single object, you see? You can select one, they will all be selected. They're essentially now one object. Okay, furthermore, the rim around this button and the other one, I'm, I'm going to fuse those. Now you also could argue that, okay, why don't you just fuse those with the screws because they're far apart, but I'm going to apply some opt optimizations because this, this particular rim around the button that is very uh, simple. It has, a, it has a very simple material. It doesn't need a normal map because there's no curvature in it. It doesn't need um, ID map. It's, all, it's the same material. Um, it doesn't need um, uh, albedo map because the color is the same as so black. So I'm going to fuse those together, but not with anything else. So later on, I don't need 
a texture basically. And if I bring this into Unity, and it can have a, I can give it a very simple material with just a color and some roughness information, but no textures whatsoever. So we'll save a bit of texture space uh, doing that. Okay, what else can we fuse? Let me see. Okay, so these two objects, we'll fuse those. Now you might think, okay, instead of pressing this button fuse, why don't you just uh, collapse them here using this feature here, collapse, or attach, you can go to the modifiers tag and use the attach feature right there. That's because only one of those works. I can't remember which it is. I think it's attached works and collapse it doesn't. It messes up the normals. And also because if you don't, zero the transform before it will fail any anyway so it's best to just follow the workflow provided in the script and this makes sure you do not encounter any problems right so i'm basically done fusing all the objects i want to fuse so moving on let's uh, save again because i've saved it before and it's already got a name here i can just press ctrl s to save it or you can press this button again it doesn't really matter so next Press weld vertices. This adds a pro optimizer to each uh, modifier stack. And basically it's just make sure that all the surfaces are connected because with CAD models, sometimes surfaces are disconnected. For example, this surface on the top here and the one on the, on the side, it could be that it looks like a water tight model, but it's not. And you cannot see this, but once you start baking textures, then it might create baking errors. So in order to prevent this from happening, just press the weld vertices, uh, weld vertices button and this will take care of that. Okay, moving on. I'll see it again. UV unwrap, right. So this can take you days, weeks, months to unwrap a big model or with a lot of uh, sub models or sub objects in it. Instead of doing that, just press this button, you can unwrap, wait a bit, and it's done for you. Now, unfortunately, it's not free. It uses a software called Unrella, but it's the most amazing unwrap piece of software I've ever seen. It really creates very high detail, very high quality unwraps, and it's really not worth the trouble trying to unwrap this yourself. Maybe if you would texture this in Photoshop and then you want to control very carefully where where the seams are, then you want to unwrap it manually. But we are painting we are texturing this in Substance Painter anyway, so it really doesn't make a difference where the seams are unless you use certain grunge maps. Some seams might be visible but only from very close up. So I highly recommend you get this uh, plugin and that will just make your life so much easier. Right. So now it's done. Save again. Then click on material for texture set and it will just give a random colored material to each uh, sub object. Basically every object which is fused or every, every single object, it gives a separate colored material. Now Substance Painter will look at this and will give each material its own texture set. The, the actual color of this uh, of these materials, it's completely irrelevant because we're going to reapply the materials in Substance Painter anyway. And this is only done so it's very visible which uh, objects are fused and which are not. So now we're done, save again. And that's the low res model, basically. So next, uh, we're going to modify the high res model. So start a new scene. and click on the button import high-res model. This will automatically import your inventor model with the correct settings, and it will import it with the highest mesh resolution of 10. Depending on the size of your model and how many detailed features it has, this can take quite a while to import. So I'm going to pause the recording now and come back when we're done. So the high resolution model has finished importing and we can continue working on our model. First thing we do is select a material for an ID map. You can you can have, you have the option to choose a random color, which I recommend you select, because the color in the ID map is really irrelevant, uh, and it's just to select different areas of the model where you want to apply different materials inside Substance Painter. 
if an, a, another reason why you want to select a uh, random color because if you would choose the original then some colors might be very close together very similar and this can create blending errors when you apply multiple materials in substance painter also so you want to make sure that all the colors which are on the same uh, texture are different enough so they can they don't uh, create any problems right so uh, also if you're not happy with the uh, result you can just press it again and it will give you a, a different uh, different colors for example now in here you can see um, that there are different uh, colors generated also in the indicator of the uh, switch it looks a bit better okay so uh, that's basically it for now there are a few more modifications we need to do with the high resolution model but for that we need a low, res re low resolution model also and it will be done at a later stage oh and one more thing here in the scene explorer you can see that there's one object which is um not doing anything if we make it visible then you can see that it's just um, a, a surface which was generated earlier during the process of uh, creating the model and we don't want that uh, 3d studio max is clever enough to figure out that it's not part of the model and that's why it automatically disables this on import and it doesn't put it in the root of the uh, model and it puts, it puts it outside of it. You might have quite a few of these uh, objects. They are, they are all placed outside of the, the root model and are easy to find. So just uh, select it and delete it. Okay, so that's basically it for now. Uh, save the hybrid scene. Again, don't save it on your own using a made up name, but use the button here because it needs the name to stitch up all the scenes together later on save there okay create a new scene again and now we are going to import the entire model which contains all the parts as a low resolution model just click on import align model it asks you where the align model is and the align model it is just a name for the the complete uh, root assembly from inventor which can contains all the other parts in this case the entire cockpit so find it cockpit and score low make sure it's the low resolution model you're working working with and click open i'm not going to do that now because this will take a very long time to import and i've already done that and once it's done importing click save align scene and in my case i've saved it right there okay next once you have finish the high resolution and low resolution version click on the button here import high, high and low res scenes and it will automatically detect which scenes are you are working on and will import them both for you there you go and the way it knows is because you selected a name right there and it uses that to figure out which scenes you're working on so at this stage you want to check that all the objects are correctly aligned what you don't want to do is change the alignment or position of one object or one feature in the high resolution model but not the low resolution model and then it will not line up and then this will create baking errors so over here you can check that everything is lined up correctly and in this case it looks pretty good with this button here you can toggle between the high res version and the low res version Next, we need to fix one thing, and it has to do with the uh, match by name baking feature in Substance Painter. Normally, if you would bake a model, then all the objects will be baking into each other. Nearby objects will be uh, affecting uh, objects of your bake. And the way this is normally solved is by exploding your model. So all the objects are moved outwards. But exploding a mesh in Substance Painter is not supported because they have something much better called match by name. The way it works, it takes your low res model and then when it's baking, 
it ignores everything else. It, it ignores all the other high-res parts which are not part of the name, except if the first part of the name is the same. Now we can make use of this to control which high-res objects are baked into the low-res model. And the way we do that is first press the button Find Name Mismatch. This highlights all the objects which will never end up in any of the textures because their name is not part of any of the low-res names. So here you can see that there is a couple of objects which are highlighted and these objects have to have their name modified so they end up in the low-res bake. The way we do that is toggle back to the low-res model and then select the object which is in this case uh, fused and and the textures baked for this object have to be influenced by some of the high-res parts. So while this is selected, toggle back to the high-res model and start selecting all the screws which have to end up in the model we just uh, selected. So all the screws you can see here, they have to be affected by the high-res objects. So remember which one those are. And then to go to the high res and select them all. So it's this one, that one, that one, this one not because that will be part of the base. Uh, what else? Okay, so this one and that one. This particular one wasn't selected by the find, find name mismatch function. So we don't have to select that. And then click on match by name. Now, Click on Find Name Mismatch again. And now you can see that this is not selected anymore because now their name or the first part of the name is the same as the low-res version right there. So when we're baking this model, then the high-res objects will be baked into it. There is uh, one screw left here and this particular one, we want to add this to the base. So if we go to the low-res model, you see that this screw is not modeled in. So when we are baking the textures for this uh, panel base, then we want to make sure that that screw located over there is baked into it. And to do that, first select the base and go to the high-res model, using control, left mouse button, click, select that one. So now there are two objects selected. The first one is always the low-res model object and then the second objects selected is anything in the high-res model so now when we click match by name then the name of this screw here is changed so that the first part is the same as the low-res base so then when we are baking the base the screw will actually end up baked into the texture so now we can click find name mismatch again and then it says no name mismatch found so now we're done with that so next now we want to add some objects on the side of the high-res model here because in the original full cockpit model there are a bunch of other panels located next to it and this will affect the ambient occlusion texture bake but if we just bake it as is like this then it will not be affected by the nearby objects. So to fix that, first uh, import the align scene. Click on here, which we prepared earlier. So this is this cockpit here. It's a bit of a big model, so it can take a little bit of time to import. And once it's imported, then we will press the button add AO, ob add AO objects, add ambient occlusion objects. So now the the full cockpit model is added right there you can see it here and this is just a low resolution version which is used for locating where all the objects must be and also to add the ambient occlusion uh, models and you can see that it's not aligned properly um, but this is it doesn't matter because it does it automatically so if you then click on add AO objects then it will automatically align the engine panel in this case with the cockpit model or 
to be more precise, the other way around, uh, the cockpit model is rotated in such a way that it will be aligned with the model we were working on. You can see that right there, now it's aligned. And all the objects which are not proximate to it or not close to it are deleted. Now, there, the way it works, it's just using a simple bounding box proximity detection. So it might include geometry which shouldn't be there, but it's very easy to delete. Like this outer shell right here, that's just used to block out uh, light. So we delete that one. Uh, this nose section, we can delete that one. And uh, let me see, what else can we delete? Ah, uh, that's basically it, I suppose. There's a bunch of other uh, objects near to it. Um, maybe you want to delete this one here because that will affect these uh, dynamic objects. And because this switch can move back and forward, so we don't want to have some ambient occlusion right there. So we'll delete this one. And that's basically it. Now, when baking ambient occlusion, you might want to make a separate high, res high resolution model for each dynamic switch because if an object can, object can move then the ambient occlusion will be baked into certain parts of the geometry and you don't want that for example with this switch the base of it you don't want the ambient occlusion to affect the area in front of here because when the switch is moved backwards it looks a bit weird so you can use a different you can just delete geometry and make a separate high resolution model for each uh, part which has uh, dynamic parts anyway so now this is uh, added to our high resolution model and when we are baking ambient occlusion then it will be nicely affected see the sides here like we'll get some ao okay so next we press the button zero high res transform same as with the low res model that makes sure that it will be imported correctly into Substance Painter. And then we can save it. Save high, high low res scene. This scene itself isn't imported anywhere, but it's just to make sure that if we want to modify something later on, we can just open the scene again, modify it and then export. So what we want to do now is just export the low res FBX, done, and export the high res FBX. All the settings are automatically set accordingly and you will not see anything happening here, but if you go to the export directory right there, then you can see that the uh, panel base is exported, both the high-res and the low-res uh, version. Okay, so this process you repeat for every single object in your scene. Uh, when you're picking an object to work with, at the top right there, this object, in, in our case, this was the uh, engine panel that you want to make sure that it's not too big so it, it, it always fits into memory and it's not uh, occluding any parts of itself like if we would work with the entire cockpit in one time it is it's just not practical so work with small sections at a time so once you have modified all the uh, high resolution and low resolution parts of the entire model then we are ready to assemble everything into the final model and the way we do that is okay first make a new start a new scene and then you click on import align scene that imports uh, it, it asks you which model it is it's a cockpit model right there this model again it uses just to place all the the separate parts relatively to each other so it's all it looks all correct and next click on the button import all low res scenes this goes through all the scenes it can find in the scenes directory. It looks at all the names of all, this, all the parts here and places them in the scene if it finds a scene with the correct name. So import all. Now, I only prepared the throttle unit and the engine panel, just as an example. Not the entire cockpit yet, but you can see how it works. And then click on the but button assemble. You, you have the option to select remove unused aligned parts, which I will use in this case. If you don't do that, then it will color all the parts it couldn't find. It will color them red. So you can see if anything is missing, but I know now something will be missing. In fact, a lot will be missing. So I will just uh, enable this so it will remove everything. Then click on uh, assemble. 
And here's the final assembled part. If all the parts would be there, then you would see the full cockpit, but I've only prepared two models, two parts. So this is only what we get so far, but you get the point. So that's basically it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post below.